Hello and welcome to this section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor. In this section we're finally going to begin to tackle one of the most central topics that you'll learn in a first semester engineering circuit analysis course and that is the topic of Thevenin equivalent circuits. Uh, it is a big deal, right? And I think you'll see in just a few seconds even before we do a problem why it's such a big deal. But basically a Thevenin equivalent circuit is going to let you simplify circuits so much that Every student has to learn them, and not only learn them, but master them. Now, you probably already noticed, if you've looked in your textbook, that after Thevenin equivalent circuits, there's another topic called Norton equivalent circuits. We're going to cover those in a little bit. What you're going to find, though, is that the Norton equivalent circuit is super easy to find once you understand what a Thevenin equivalent circuit is. So it looks like we have lots of different kinds of topics, but Norton equivalent circuits, it's almost like an add-on. Once you understand Thevenin, Norton just kind of naturally follows. All right, so up until this point, just kind of take stock of where we've been in circuit analysis. We've learned the basics of power and current and resistance, and we've, we've tackled uh, Kirchhoff's voltage laws and current laws, which are always true. And then we've tackled node voltage and mesh current, which if you think about it, really are just Kirchhoff's laws in a slightly different way to make the equations a little bit more rock solid to be able to write them. All right, and then we've learned recently about source transformations, where when you have a big circuit and you have a source, which is maybe like a voltage source in series with a resistance, we can transform that voltage source into a current source. Or if we already have a current source, you can transform the current source into a voltage source. So there's kind of a duality, right? We learned how to flip-flop back and forth between current sources and voltage sources, right? And so those source transformations that we did recently we're really just zooming in to the you know, left-hand side of the circuit, usually, where the source lies. The Thevenin equivalent circuit is much more general. And I'm going to say it a couple of times, and I'm going to draw it on the board to show you. A Thevenin equivalent circuit lets you take your entire circuit that you have and basically model it as a voltage source and a resistance. right? Not just a part of the circuit, not just the part that deals with the source. I'm saying the whole enchilada. Right? Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's just say that I have a circuit. Now, I'm not going to draw a circuit. I'm writing the word circuit here because I'm going to put it inside of a black box. Now, you don't know what's in here. This could be 15 current sources in there and 29 resistors. Could be 34 resistors and 3 current sources and 2 voltage sources, all interconnected in weird ways. Okay? But the only thing you know is that coming on the outside of this box is two little holes. One wire is terminal A and one wire is terminal B. That's all you know. You cannot see what's inside the box. You don't even know what's inside the box. Right? What the Thevenin equivalent theorem says is that I can replace this. So I'm going to kind of, kind of draw a little arrow like this. I can replace this doesn't matter what's in the box. I can replace the whole enchilada with the following. With a voltage source that I call the Thevenin voltage source, VTH, the Thevenin source. It's just a voltage source in series with a Thevenin resistance. And this guy, I'm going to label terminal A, and this guy, I'm going to label terminal B, right? So if you think about it and you can compare this drawing to this drawing, really, the black box that we drew is kind of like here. We kind of go around like this. Right. So 